Hey, Lola. Where are you? I know the time got changed, but I want to at least know where you are. It's fine if you're staying with a friend, but please just let me know you're okay. Why are you still messaging me? Did you forget our agreement? In exchange for me marrying you, you don't ask me about what I do or who I see. I know, I know. I'm just worried about you is all. I get that you have a lot of friends and you spend a lot of time seeing them. And that's fine. It's just dangerous for you to be walking around alone at night. And I just want to know where you're staying just in case something happens and I can't get in contact with you. Yeah, alright. I'm staying with a friend tonight. Is that all? Yeah, that's all I need to know. I just want to know you're safe. Fine. Anyway, my friend and I are watching a movie. Don't message me again tonight. Okay. Thanks. Hey, Tim. Did your wife come home last night? No, she was staying at a friend's house yesterday. Why? What's up? Do you really believe that? You really can be naive sometimes, man. What do you mean? Do you think she lied to me? All I'm saying is she's probably not the meek little woman you think she is. I saw someone who looked an awful lot like Lola out with a guy I've never seen before last night. It could have been someone else, but I'd bet money that it was Lola. I can't say I'm that surprised, sadly. As much as I don't want it to be true, I knew that she would probably do this the moment I proposed to her, but I still went along with it. But I still feel like as her husband I should trust her. Even if I know deep down that she will probably betray that trust. Man. You're really letting yourself get let on, huh? Aren't you miserable living like this? If she's going to treat you like trash, why do you want to stay with her? She's just going to keep lying to you and fooling around and you're just going to get more and more miserable. You can't let her take advantage of you like this. I mean, I don't know. She's always been like this, though. Even when she was in kindergarten. In kindergarten? What? Yeah, for as long as I can remember, she's gotten her way. She was the teacher's favorite and would always go around bullying the other kids. And then when she got found out, she would cry and cry and lie about what happened so she wouldn't get in trouble. I was the victim of that more than once. I can't believe you still remember that. But I guess it shows how selfish she's always been. Yeah, I suppose so. I don't know. I guess I should be madder. But I've just had all the energy to be mad sucked out of me. Look, Tim. You're a nice guy and I'm sure that's gotten you far in a lot of things. But you're letting Lola walk all over you. She's taking advantage of how nice you are. You can't just roll over and let her do whatever without caring about what you want to. I mean, I guess. You really need to have a talk with her about this. You're better off trying to at least confront her. I don't know. Think about it. Do you have a second to talk, Tim? Sure. What's up? I'm pregnant. What? I'm about eight weeks along. We should probably start making arrangements now. Whoa, wait a second here. You're pregnant? This is a joke, right? Why would I joke about this? I mean, I don't know. It's just that. I've barely seen you in six months. How could it even be mine? I mean, of course it's not yours. But you're my husband, so it will be. Legally, at least. So you're the one responsible for raising it. I'm sorry. I'm still just trying to process all of this. You're just freely admitting to me that not only did you cheat, but you're pregnant with someone else's child. And you're telling me that I have no choice but to raise it for you. Yeah. What do you mean, yeah? Is that all you have to say? I don't know how you couldn't have figured it out by now. I'm spending all my time at a friend's house. I haven't slept at home in weeks. I figured you would have pieced it together at this point. 
I thought you meant like a girlfriend. I didn't think it would be a boyfriend. Really? I thought I was being too obvious. Apparently, I wasn't being obvious enough. But I thought you were staying with Lisa for a while. Oh yeah, I was. For like, two days max. And I did stay in a motel for a few days too. Why? Why not come home? Why would I come home to you? I needed space, so I stayed with Lisa, and then when I got bored of her, I just went to a motel. Well, okay, I guess. But what about the kid? Whose kid is it? Like I told you, legally, it's your kid. It doesn't really matter who the father is because you're gonna raise it. Shouldn't I at least have the right to know who the actual biological father is? Oh, this 40-year-old guy. I think he's married with kids, actually. I don't remember his name. Ron? I think it's Ron. Anyway, I'm not telling him about it. He doesn't need another kid to deal with. So you're gonna make me raise it instead? Again, you're the father legally, so yeah, you're gonna raise it. You're just gonna have this kid and never tell the father at all? Shouldn't they know who their actual father is? It seems kind of cruel to just act like I'm their actual father the whole time. And what about me? What if I want a kid of my own? Oh my god, you're being so annoying. I'm giving you a kid. Isn't that what you wanted? Shouldn't you just be happy about it and accept it? I'd be happy if it was mine. Now all I'm gonna think about when I see them is you and how unfaithful you were to me. Have you forgotten our arrangement again? You said the day we got engaged that you'd let me do whatever I wanted as long as I married you. And you'd go along with it and not complain. I thought you meant, like, going out with friends or traveling or something. Not cheating on me. We never agreed to that. If you wanted it to be like that, maybe you should have said something at the time. I didn't think I had to. I thought, don't cheat on your husband was implied. Ugh, you're impossible. Why did I even bother marrying you in the first place? You aren't hot. You're not even all that rich. I guess I don't have to work, but I could find a million better guys who would love to put a ring on this. What? Really? All you are to me is an ATM. Is that what you married me for? Just for the money? Why else would I marry you? You're boring. You're weak. You're ugly. You're a pushover. You can barely stand up for yourself at all. It's embarrassing, to be honest. Are you going to divorce me? I've thought about it. But I guess we're stuck at this point. I should have listened to my mother. And anyway, do you actually want a divorce? Why wouldn't I? It'd be pretty embarrassing for you. Especially in your big shot management job. Messy divorces don't look very good. And I'm sure it'd end up in the papers one way or another. Or at least on gossip sites. Yeah, I guess so. Either way, I'm not going to let you go. I still need money and this kid needs a father. So until someone else comes along, you're not going anywhere. No, I won't just let you run off with the kid either. It's still my baby. You just get to do the parts I don't want to. Like diapers and sports games and all that gross, boring stuff. Do you really think you can get away with all this? Of course I do. Why would I be telling you if I didn't? What makes you think you can? Because I'm beautiful. Everyone loves me, and I can do whatever I want. Everyone is just happy to have me around. I bet our kid won't even like you. I guess you're right. You are a beautiful woman who gets plenty of attention from men. Of course I am. But... But what? No, it's not worth bringing up. But I will say one thing. It won't last forever. Pregnancy isn't exactly kind to your body. You might be hot to trot now, but after a few months of carrying a baby, it's not going to be so easy. Well, you're right about that, at least. But it's whatever. I'll just get my body back after I pop this kid out. 
and then I'll be hotter than ever. Whoa, Tim. Is it really true? What? What's true? Is Lola really pregnant with someone else's kid? There's no way, right? Oh, I guess the word's gotten out then. Yeah, I heard it from someone at work. She must have told one of the secretaries or something. I can't believe she got pregnant by a married man and is going to make you raise his kid without him even knowing about it. I mean, if that's actually true at least. That's just what I heard. Yeah, that's basically the gist of it. Wow, that's rough, man. I couldn't believe it at first. It sounds like it's straight out of a soap opera. But based off what you were telling me about Lola, it doesn't actually seem all that hard to believe. But this is really just awful either way. Ah, uh, it's alright. Really? It doesn't sound very alright to me. She totally ran you down and took advantage of you. The girl who told me about it showed me the text she got from Lola about it. Do you remember what they said? Uh, yeah, something like, uh... Here, let me just copy them for you. And the kid just gets me another layer of protection. Their insurance. All I have to do is carry it around for nine months and lock him down forever. Sounds about right. That's all you have to say? She's awful! Criminally awful! It's fine. I've made my peace with it. Are you really just giving up? I mean, no. I'm just gonna roll with it. The kid hasn't done anything wrong. I don't want to make their life miserable just because mine is. That's noble of you. But I am worried that you're just gonna end up bitter and resentful. I'll figure it out. I hope so. But still, if you ever need anything, just let me know, alright? Yeah, thanks. Where are you, Tim? The baby is crying in the next room. Hurry up and do something! It's ear-splittingly loud. Taking care of the baby is your job. You should be here to do it. Hello? Where are you? I have plans with Mitchell and I don't want to be late. Today's one month since Adam was born, right? Are you sure you really should be going out already? You probably should still be taking it easy. Go check on the baby and go back to bed. I know you're not giving me a lip right now. Come home and deal with this. Where are you this early in the morning anyway? Oh good, it stopped crying. Were you here this whole time? Have you not left the bedroom at all this morning? No, I just woke up. Or I was woken up. By the baby screaming. You should pay better attention to it so it doesn't wake me up like this. It's starting to become neglectful. You're his mother. You also have a responsibility to take care of him. If I'm not able or I'm not there, you're supposed to do something when he cries or he's hungry. I do stuff. It's fine when it's happy and smiling and whatever. But I just cannot deal with the crying. And the stinky diapers. Definitely not. Never. I am not changing a single diaper as long as I live. So you basically just don't want to do any of the hard work and want all the benefits of motherhood. You can't have your cake and eat it too, Lola. I don't mind doing some of the easy stuff sometimes. This is just too much. And anyway, I have to get ready. For your date with your boyfriend? Duh. I haven't seen him since I gave birth and this is the only time he's had free since then. I don't know if I'm going to get another chance to see him. So you better come back and take the kid so I can leave. I guess it's better that you're honest about it. Yeah, exactly. Glad we're on the same page. I expect you to be home in an hour so I can leave. See you soon. Hey, idiot! Pick up the phone! What did you say to my parents? My grandmother just started crying! What did you do? Explain yourself!
yourself! Did you finally get out of bed? You left them waiting for quite a while. It takes me time to get my makeup done and do my hair. But that doesn't matter! Why is all my family in our house? My mom took the baby and said she isn't going to give it back! Isn't it obvious? I called them. I would have thought they told you by now. What did you say to them? Just the truth. I told them about your terms for us getting married. And about everything with your 40-year-old baby daddy with a wife and kids. And about your new boyfriend, Mitchell. And about how all your running around and doing whatever you want was a burden on me and Adam. They seem pretty understanding, to be honest. How have I been a burden? Isn't it obvious? You running around with all sorts of guys after we got married. Not to mention cheating with a married man. And having his kid without even telling him. And making me raise him after that. You don't even bother to help with the kid at all. All you do is order me around. You just make me do all the dirty work so you can go off and mess around with your boyfriend and leave me at home to watch your child. I keep telling you. This is what you agreed to when you married me. Are you really surprised that this is how it turned out? I told you I'd only marry you if you let me do what I want and didn't complain. So why are you so shocked that I'm doing what I said I'd do? If you don't want to abide by the terms of our agreement, then we should just get divorced. But first, call off your dogs. Tell my parents and grandma to give me back the kid and get the hell out of our house. Now they're telling me they want me to move back to the farm with them so they can keep an eye on me. Are they crazy? Well, the fresh air might be good for Adam. Is this just a ploy to get me to divorce you? If that's what you want, you can just say it. Instead of treating me like a child and involving my parents in our marriage. I'm only treating you like a child because you're acting like it. And since you are such a child, we should get divorced. When I married you, I thought I was marrying a grown woman. But clearly, you're no more mature than that little kindergartner who would scream and cry to get her way and then blame everyone else for stuff she did. When we got married, I was just happy that I found someone as beautiful as you who would be willing to give me the time of day. But now my eyes have been opened. I'm not putting up with you anymore. What are you saying? Do you actually want a divorce? Yeah, that's pretty clear, I think. You can't do this to me! You can't cut off the mother of your child! He's not my child. I mean, maybe he is, legally. And I'd be happy to take care of him if you're not going to. I can't believe you. I've already called a lawyer and she said she'll be sending the papers over to you soon. All you have to do is sign them and give them back. The paralegal they're sending over will deal with the rest. So for everyone's sake, please cooperate and sign as soon as possible. The paralegal is going to stay to make sure it all gets done. You might also want to hire a lawyer yourself, but I'm not sure if you can afford it. Or even if there'll be that much help. Are you really gonna go through with this? You're nothing without me! Yeah, I made up my mind a while ago. I'm ready to do this whenever you come to your senses. But what about the kid? What will happen to him? Well, you're clearly not fit to be a mother. The courts will have to decide, ultimately, but I'm pretty sure your parents will end up taking care of him for now. Once everything is sorted out, I'll be glad to help them raise him, and maybe even take him myself if everyone agrees. But you definitely won't have anything to do with him aside from an occasional visit. And your job? Aren't you worried this will leak to the press and ruin your reputation? I've spoken to a few people about that, too. Every PR person I've talked with has said there's basically no way this can make me look bad. It's a scandal, to be sure, but you're the one who cheated on me and manipulated me into raising someone else's kid. Sure, it makes me look a little weak, but it's not hard for them to spin you as a gold-digging harpy. Which isn't even really a spin, to be honest. Won't your employees lose confidence in you? If you can be manipulated this easily, there's no way you're fit to run a company. Well, for starters, they've known for a while, but I still have their full confidence. I was just speaking with Marcus, my VP, and he said everyone is rooting for me at work. Whatever you think was going to happen is definitely not going to happen now. Unlike you, 
I actually care about people and what happens to them. I don't just use them for my own pleasure. They want me to be happy and successful. You just want me to rot away into nothing while you take all my money. If you're divorcing me, I expect alimony at least. Do you really think you deserve alimony? You can try. But if you bring it in front of a judge, I don't think they'll be all that sympathetic. If anything, I'm being too generous with the offer I'm making you. A clean break with custody to be sorted out by the state. If it ends up in the hands of a judge, they might make you pay me. After all, you've burdened me with a child that's not even mine. I'm happy to fund his care and education personally, but a judge might not agree. What do you expect me to do then? I don't know. Find a job? Maybe ask your boyfriend. See if you can marry him and mooch off his bank account for a few years. I doubt he'll be quite as nice as I have been, though. Once everything was said and done, I definitely spent a long time wondering why I married Lola in the first place. All the signs of a failed marriage were there even before we tied the knot, but I let myself be blinded by her beauty before I realized what a witch she actually is. It took quite an effort and considerable pressure to get her to sign the divorce papers. But, after quite a few tantrums and a breakdown, the papers were signed and our divorce was finalized as amicably as it could possibly have been. Lola, of course, decided not to go live on her family farm. Initially, she shacked up with her boyfriend. However, she quickly returned to her old ways, and it wasn't long before he kicked her out for cheating on him, too. At that point, really desperate for money, Lola practically begged her parents to take her in, but with little Adam still in their care, they decided they didn't want her around the child at all. Instead, she moved in with another ex-boyfriend, who forced her to do all the cooking and cleaning. She also had no choice but to find a dead-end retail job to support herself, since her deadbeat ex is not particularly interested in paying the rent. I, meanwhile, have managed to move on without much issue. While things are still somewhat awkward and tense between me and Lola's family, they were more than grateful to see me step up to the plate to care for little Adam. It was a bit of a mess at first, but I managed to work out an agreement to help raise him as my own son. Eventually, after much negotiation and some input from everyone involved, except Lola, of course, the family happily gave him over to me and left him in my care. During all of this, Adam's biological father caught wind of what had happened. While the revelation that he was cheating on his wife caused him quite a few problems leading to his own divorce, he also decided he wanted to be a part of Adam's life. Despite the fact that he was the man with which Lola cheated on me, I decided he was just as much of a victim of Lola's as I was. I decided to help him out and found him a lawyer to help restore his parental rights. Through this process, he and I actually became quite close, bonding over our experiences with the manipulative and scheming Lola. With his divorce recently finalized, he decided he wanted to give fatherhood another shot, and with me in his life now, we decided to give it a try together. He and I, with little input from Lola, are now co-parenting the beautiful child that Lola brought into this world against everyone's wishes, and we couldn't be happier. Despite her best efforts, we all have a happy ending. Except for Lola, of course.